Hello, you're watching Central News for the Midlands. Good afternoon. Hundreds of people opposed to HS2, the planned high-speed rail link between London and the Midlands, have gathered to voice their collective concerns. The meeting was the first time groups from across the country had joined together. Once the place for a yearly royal gathering of farmers and livestock, today Stonely Park in Warwickshire played host to a beef of a different kind. Anger at the government's plans for a multi-billion pound, 250 mile an hour rail link that would run close to the homes and businesses of people up and down the country. Chipping Warden, South Northamptonshire. I'm from Middleton in Warwickshire. I'm from Boddington, 10 miles north of Banbury. Amersham in South Buckinghamshire. It doesn't just affect the people who are living along the line, it affects every single person in this country. We're, we're losing our local transport, we're having transport investment cuts in order to pay for this. And the further you are away from the line, the less likely you are to benefit from it. But they will take your tax away from your local area in order to pay for it. There's been massive opposition to the plans ever since they were announced two years ago. But this week, Green Gauge 21, a group set up to promote the case for HS2, said that, amongst other things, the line would mean twice as many direct services from Wolverhampton to London, Warsaw could have a direct service to London every hour, and there would be more frequent commuter services into London and Birmingham. That doesn't wash, though, with transport expert and author Christian Woolmar. One of the downsides, of course, is that you know, there will be a, a long period before they even start construction and then uh, I think probably the most disruptive part will be during construction when there'll be you know, absolutely huge numbers of, of lorries going through in big, big sites and whatever. But I think more important than that is that the long-term effect of this. I, I, I don't think that there is a green case for it at all, certainly not to justify the, the large amount of environmental damage that it will cause. A national consultation period on HS2 begins at the end of this month, but those at today's gathering are aiming to make sure no one forgets their views. Good afternoon. More than 500 people from across the country have converged on Warwickshire to campaign against plans for a high-speed rail link between London and Birmingham. They've been told the scheme, known as HS2, is a white elephant and a waste of public money. Well, our reporter Kath Mackey has spent the day with them. So, Kath, what's the mood been like? I think the mood really has been one of determination. There's been people here from all over the country. You see behind me, they've packed up now, but they've gone away determined to fight any attempt to build a high-speed rail link between Birmingham and London. A white elephant lumbered along, a visual metaphor for the high-speed rail link, according to the hundreds of protesters who turned up at Stoneley in Warwickshire. We must invest in the future, not in the past. They came from all over the country. Many will be directly affected if the line between Birmingham and London is built. The railway will be two to three hundred metres from our house. We live about 500 metres away from the line. The noise impact will be awful and um, I don't believe that it should be done. Fending off accusations of nimbyism, the protesters say HS2 simply isn't in the national interest. The idea of HS2 is that we spend uh, £18 billion pounds to get to Birmingham 11 minutes quicker. That is not going to transform the economy. All this is doing is enabling a few very wealthy people to travel slightly faster. They're a vocal lot, but so too is the pro-lobby, who are on the offensive. Having something like High Speed 2 will encourage inward investment. It will encourage new clusters of jobs. It will encourage things away from the southeast. It will encourage employment in the area. New skills will arrive in the area. It will help build the whole economy. And we all benefit from that. But the protesters say it's they who have the best case and they're confident they'll win. Well, the consultation process starts at the end of the month. It goes on for six months. Now, if the protesters lose, and I have to say they're convinced they're going to win this, but if they do lose, we could have a high-speed rail link between Birmingham and London by the mid-2020s. Jackie. Kath, thank you very much. And tomorrow's politics show will have a studio debate on this issue with the arguments for and against. That's at midday on BBC One.